In event sourcing, typically you'll replay all the events from the beginning of time from an event stream to get to the current state of your aggregate. In my recent event sourcing video, I had a lot of comments ask, well, what happens if you have a lot of events? Wouldn't that be really inefficient? And it could be, but that's where snapshots come in. I'll explain what they are, how they work, and an implementation using EventStoreDB. Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. All right, so before I even get explaining what snapshots are and how they work, we really need to think about how many events are you gonna actually have in an event stream? And the reason why people were asking this is because I was referring to kind of a stream related to a product in a warehouse and all the things that occur. And you could see possibly how that would be open-ended. If you were selling for a product for years, however long that was, and there was a lot of things happening with that product in the warehouse, you could see how you could build up a lot of events for that stream. Same thing if you think about like a bank account and there's a lot of transactions happening, a lot of events. But in a lot of circumstances, your event streams related to your aggregates are kind of going to be a finite lifetime. So things like an order, when an order gets created to the point an order gets shipped, there's only so many events that occur within that time. So you really need to make sure, do you really need to go down this road of doing snapshots? It really comes down to how many events that you really have and how long it's going to take to process them. All right, so looking at this event stream, it relates to a product in a warehouse. So for product SKU ABC123, I have four events. Um, product received of 10, received of five, so we're at 15 if we're counting our quantity here. Uh, product shipped, so we have to subtract six to that, so now we're at nine. And then we do a product adjustment of 50, so we're at 59. So that's how we would get to our current state of what we are keeping track of for quantity on hand. We'd need to replay this. It wouldn't be that difficult to process four events. But let's just imagine you had thousands or millions to pull all that data and replay all those events to get to current state so you can perform some other action like do another uh, adjustment or something to figure out whether that's um, possible based off business rules. You'd have to replay all those events, which could be very inefficient, time consuming. It would make the system very slow. So to combat this, instead of having to replay everything is what you use is what's called a snapshot. What a snapshot is, it's a representation of state for your aggregate at a particular point in time. And what I mean by a particular point in time is really it's the state given at a particular event. So what I have here is I actually have two streams. I still have my main product event stream here for this particular warehouse product, a product ABC123. But I also have now have another event stream called product snapshot ABC123. And what we do at some given interval, in this case, I'm making it really simple. I'm just doing four events, but you could think of this as probably in the thousands or however kind of you, you need to do it to make it uh, efficient. But I have a snapshot here. And what this is, is basically recording uh, an event that a snapshot of a recording what the particular state is. So I'm saying we had 59 of our quantity and I'm gonna point to what the version is where that state relates to, where that snapshot belongs to. So I've replayed all these events and I've said, okay, I'm at my current state of 59 and this was index zero, so this is version three. And then we're gonna record that particular snapshot. If you would keep going and say we had more and more events and whatever our interval was, mine's four, but again, for demo purposes, in reality, this would be a much larger number. So what I would do is I would keep recording those snapshots. So at this point, I would be at quantity 20, for example, is maybe my current state of my aggregate. And I would point that to this version, which is version seven. And then I would keep going. Once another event came in that kind of broke that threshold, that interval, we would take what the current state is, let's say it's 87, and we would point to what that version is. Now, the way this works is once you go, or once you build up your aggregate and you need to get to rebuild it, what you do, you first do is you look at this snapshot stream and you read it backwards. So instead of starting at index zero, I'm actually going to start reverse and I'm going to just get the very first snapshot, snapshot if it exists in this separate stream to get what the state and the version is. Once I get this data, I can pass the state into my aggregate and then I can ask the other stream from our event store to say, okay, I know that a version 11 is the last one we had. Give me version 12 if it exists. And then there forward. So we'll get version 12, 
13 and 14. So what we're doing is our snapshot becomes kind of this starting point of what state is. And then because we recorded the version with it, we're gonna get all the versions since that snapshot has occurred. So to illustrate this in code, I'm gonna use EventStoreDB as my event store and their client API. I'm gonna implement this pretty much exactly how I just described it. All the source code for the demo app in this video is available to my developer level members of my channel. If you're interested in joining and want more info, go to my channel, click the join button. All right, so the first thing to look at here are the events that I have. So we have product shipped, product receive, and inventory adjusted. So all these are the events that are gonna be the event stream for our warehouse product. All right, so the next thing to look at is our actual aggregate for our warehouse product. Now our aggregate is the one that has the logic on whether you can perform certain actions, which will basically add events to our event stream. So for example, if you wanna ship a product out, you specify the quantity, and we have some logic here saying, well, you can't ship more product than we have on hand. Now this is important because that means that we need to keep current state in our aggregate. And the way we do that is when we replay all the events is what we're, we're building up this current state. So the current state that I'm recording for the uh, pro warehouse product is just the quantity on hand. And the only reason that is, is because that's really the only piece of data that we have for business logic. So when you ship a product, we have this check. And if this passes and we have enough quantity, then we call add event and we're adding this new event, which will be saved to our event stream. Now, what this does is for every event that we have that we add to our system, we have an appropriate apply method. This apply method is really what's updating that state. So if I look at product shipped, that means that we're basically gonna update our quantity on hand from our state by removing the quantity that from the event that just occurred. So a snapshot again is the representation of the event stream at a particular point in time for our aggregate. And our aggregate, what it uses as its state is this warehouse product state. So this is actually what we're gonna use within our snapshot. All right, so this is my repository that really has to do all that heavy lifting that basically has to feed the aggregate all the events so it can play them as well as give it the state from a snapshot. So my aggregate, I just have a factory here that makes the connection to event store. That's really not that important. So I have this method called get, and this is what the, we're using from the repository to actually get out our aggregate of our warehouse product. So it's, I'm basically generating a stream name um, based off the SKU, so it'll be called like product dash whatever the SKU is. And then I have this method called get snapshot. So what get snapshot does is it's looking at that separate stream that I pointed out, which is a separate stream from our normal events that just has the snapshots. And what we're doing is with our connection to events, uh, the event store, we're reading that stream backwards and I only wanna get one event. So if there is one event, then I'm basically gonna pull that event out, deserialize it, and turn it into the type that I have here called snapshot, and just return that. Otherwise, I'm just returning basically an empty snapshot. And what this looks like is this has a version, which is gonna be default to zero if it doesn't exist, and we're just creating a new instance. And then again, that warehouse product state that I mentioned in the aggregate, that's the thing we actually care about. So we're gonna have a property on this called state. So if there's a snapshot, um, we're gonna return it based off of what was actually in the event stream. So if I jump back up a little bit, so here's our snapshot. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new instance of our aggregate. I'm gonna pass in the SKU that we're requesting and I'm passing in the state from that snapshot. Next, because that snapshot contained the version, I know where I need to start at and I know I don't need to replay all the events from index zero. I can basically go whatever that version was in the snapshot that recorded one more than that. So now I'm gonna query the event stream to get all the uh, other events that have happened since then. And I'm just gonna iterate over them and then I'm gonna apply them. This is like replaying those extra events to get to current state. Once I've done that, then I can return my warehouse product to my application code that's gonna try to likely use some other action method like doing an inventory adjustment or receiving product. And it can do that because now it's back to current state and we use the snapshot to do it. So we use the, the most recent snapshot and then replay the events since then. All right, so the last piece of puzzle now is actually creating snapshots. So when we go to call save on our repository, we are saving all the events to our event stream, the new ones that have occurred. And then what we do at the very end of that is decide, okay, well, you're at a particular version number, should you actually, based off some interval that you define, should you create a snapshot? 
So you make that determination, and what you do is I have a pen snapshot here where I'm passing in the aggregate, and then the current version that we're at in our event stream. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a new snapshot that has the state in it from the aggregate and the version passed in of where we are at and that event stream. And I'm appending that now to our separate stream for the snapshots. All right, so I have a console application that I've written that just allows us to interact with that repository and that aggregate to do receive inventory, ship it, and do inventory adjustments. So I also have two tabs open that have the event store uh, web UI open, and I'm gonna show the streams for our regular events and then that separate stream for the snapshot. So that snapshot's gonna occur on every fourth event, after every fourth event. So I'm gonna receive some inventory for ABC123 and we're gonna receive a quantity of 10. Then I'm gonna do this again for ABC123, and we're gonna receive a quantity of five. So I've created two events. I'm gonna jump over to the stream browser, and you can see for warehouse product ABC123, there's our two events that we've created. So let's jump back over. So now I'm gonna do a ship inventory, and immediately you're gonna see that event uh, hit our event stream, so I'm gonna ship, ABC123, and we're gonna ship six. So that occurred immediately. And now on this fourth event is when I have it configured to actually create a snapshot. So we're gonna do an inventory adjustment. So right now our current state is nine. So for ABC123, we're going to uh, adjust it to add an, an additional 50, so we'll be at a state of 59. All right, so there's our adjusted. Now, if I go back to the stream browser over here, we can see we've created a snapshot and there's our first snapshot event. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break on the next time we call anything so we can look at what that snapshot is. And we can see how we're gonna start at that particular state. So what I'm gonna do is let's just do another receive of ABC123 and we're gonna break here. Now, if we look at our snapshot, we can see that version three because that's our fourth event, we start at zero. And if we look at our state, we're at our quantity of 59. So now when we actually go to our event stream, we're actually gonna start at the next version. We're gonna say we want, actually our next version is gonna be version four. So since there are, there are none at, after that point, I'll add another breakpoint here. We can see that there's no events to go through. So we're just immediately gonna start up at, at that state. Let me jump back over to the console. So let's do a, we're at 59. So let's do 11. So we just received 11, so we're gonna be at 70 now. So if I do quantity on hand, we're looking at our warehouse product. We can see our snapshot is still at the same point. We're still at version three. We're at 59. But now we're actually gonna get start getting some events out here particularly just one event, which is that next event that we just created, which was our um, warehouse uh, product received. So then we'll replay that event, and then we can see that now our quantity on hand is 70. So snapshots and event sourcing are a way to record what current state is within your aggregate at a point in time for what your event stream is. It allows you to kind of set checkpoints to say at this particular version, this is what state looked like in our aggregate. It allows you to go to that state, to that checkpoint snapshot, and then replay all the events sit that have happened since then to get you back to current state. As I've already mentioned in the beginning, this adds some complexity to snapshotting versus just using your event stream and replaying them all the time. If you need to go down this road, investigate, figure out whether you actually need to do it. Like I said, a lot of the cases, your event streams are gonna be finite. You kind of have like a life cycle to an event stream, but if something is gonna have a really long uh, life cycle and have a lot of events with it, it may be worth trying to figure out if you should do checkpoints or snapshots to figure out if that can help efficiency so you're not having to fetch all those previous events and replay them to get to current state. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks.